He's been the voice of an entire clone army. No big deal. And she is the voice of the plucky young clone, Omega. Now they're both back with a brand new season of Star Wars The Bad Batch. Give a huge Star Wars celebration. Welcome to Dee Bradley Baker and Michelle o! How exciting, the energy and the love is just remarkable. You guys love the Bad Batch so much. It's, I, I did not, I, this is a whole new depth that I've come to see this time out and it's so touching and inspiring. And there's the Tauntaun, oh, that's awesome. There is also an entire, Bad Batch crew oh, back them. here I in the corner. The back there. Hey. <laughs> Hello. We've got, we've got tech, we've got everybody out here. It's fantastic. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so great to have you all here today. Now this season had a whole lot of twists and turns, a whole lot. So let's see, what was your favorite part of season two? We'll start with you, Michelle. Um, I really enjoyed lots and lots of it, but one thing that comes to mind right now is um, Tex. A uh, flying lesson for Omega <laughs> when we were on Pabu. I just thought like, easy breezy tech doesn't get ruffled very easily. It was quite <laughs> fun to see tech uh, a little bit out of his comfort zone, maybe for the first time in a while, um, trying to hold it together. Yes, he, he <laughs> had a lot to learn from her and she from him. It was, it was really, really beautiful, wasn't it? Yep. Also, it's fun, it's fun playing an enthusiastic Omega, and I think she likes flying. And she's like getting good at it, too. She's really good. And what was your favorite part of this season? Uh, I'm, you know, my favorite episode was The Outpost. That one really hit me the deepest. Um, with Mayday as a new favorite tech uh, a clone of mine. But I'm, I, I want to pick a favorite moment that's a very quiet moment and sort of an unfulfilled, lingering moment where Fee says goodbye to tech. And they're saying goodbye, but they don't know that they're saying goodbye. And the way they try to negotiate the, the emotional chasm uh, that still connects them, I think is a really beautiful moment where it's, it doesn't finish, but sometimes that's how it plays out in life or in a relationship where you don't fully say what you want or feel and, and people are different and it just plays out that way. And there's something kind of beautifully real about that, that final moment together. It's also, it's also sad, but it's, there's an understanding between the two that, that this is who we are, you know? So I have a follow-up to that one. Doing emotional moments between yourself and yourself, how, is it ever, is it ever, well, one, I mean, it's having a conversation with yourself, but not really. These are different characters, but you, the actor, is, is it ever, I don't know, I don't, not weird. Is it just ever a jarring, so Yeah, to speak? The, the most difficult moment of that that I can think of is when Rex was saying goodbye to Fives, um, where I'm, I'm playing against myself in this profoundly sad, for me, for me, Fives is the saddest of all Star Wars characters. Um, and he's a... And, yeah. I love Fives too. He was a good, a good man, gone but not forgotten. But to play that, that scene uh, like that was... That's, I, that's, I've, I've never really played anything like that, and it was... And it really, it really affected me. I was quite sad for quite a long time after that. That, and, and just the, the Umbara arc, which is just broadly tragic and, and deeply affecting. Yeah. Krell. 
yeah, it, that, that one really got me too, in particular. Thanks for sharing that. I just, it's something I was thinking about. Now, Michelle, how has your performance changed as the character of Omega has grown? Well, in season two, there's been a bit of a time jump, so she's not quite as young as when we first met her. Um, and so I guess vocally that means that I kind of had to work on a voice coming from a slightly different place, slightly closer perhaps to my own natural like timbre. So um, in some ways it was, it was easier, uh, but also just the way she was written, you know, um, she is such a part of the batch in season two. She's like really confident in her place and she relishes being a soldier, going in for the adventure, problem solving in a crisis. Um, so that sort of like innate confidence meant that she kind of spoke differently and the writers did a great job, you know, the way that she spoke with, on the scripts meant that I could really inhabit yeah. that confidence. Um, yeah, but it was really fun. Now Dee, I know this is like asking someone to pick their favorite child, but which member of Clone Force 99 is your favorite to perform and why? Well, at the moment. <laughs> the answer to that question will be crosshair because His is an interesting trajectory, and I want to see where it goes. That's so cool. Yeah. I don't like to do record because he wrecks my voice. <laughs> but I like to blow things up because I like to blow things up. <laughs> Yeah! Now, Dee. Yes? Coming up very soon, you will be introducing a new character, not on The Bad Batch, but on a little show called Young Jedi Adventures. <laughs> Let's talk about nubs! Chisa, uh, <laughs> Yeah, Nubs is, um, is, uh, yes, Nubs! Little blue furry guy, very friendly, uh, very energetic, and lots of fun uh, with the, uh, the Young Jedi uh, adventures that are coming up on May the 4th. And, uh, and he's a member of these, of these Young Jedis in training, and such a sweet, fun, bright, optimistic, energetic little critter. Uh, great fun to voice about as far from crosshair as you can possibly get. And, uh, and he, it's, a, it's like a little vacation to go over to this other little realm of the Star Wars and to create this new little guy. It's great fun. I, I think you're really gonna love the series. I don't know if you saw the first uh, couple episodes that they showed, but it, it's, it's, it's really great. It's something you can share with the young, young kids where the sense of drama and darkness uh, and the larger political story is not really so much the central issue and it's lighter and it's fun, but it's very much Star Wars. It's very much Star Wars. So, something to look forward to there. Now, Michelle, what have you learned about the fandom from being a part of this project? Um, that it's a huge, big family. I feel like no matter where we go in the world, um, all of the people who gather look out for each other, look out for, for, for us, and I feel like it's really genuinely the warmest, most inviting family ever. So, yeah, it's... <laughs> it's a really beautiful thing to see how you guys connect into these stories and these characters. Because I think we all, and I know I've felt an, an outsider or someone who's working against something or working through something that's very difficult. And to find a personal connection in these stories and in these characters, it's a really beautiful thing. And then to come together in this community, which is a very accepting, very inclusive, uh, very energized and positive community, it's really what human beings should be doing. And I think it's wonderful what you have. And we really feel it, like I can feel it. 
Well, well, just like you, there are thousands of voices inside my head, and by my head I mean my earpiece, and they're all telling me that unfortunately we need to wrap up. So if we can all give a huge, huge round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Stick around for more from our stage at Star Wars Celebration Live coming up in just a minute.